Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. And the SNP Leadership Challenge took a very weird turn last night. The three candidates were let out into the wild, off the leash and away from their handlers. And it was delicious to watch. They fought each other like ferrets in a sack. And Kate Forbes launched herself on Hamza Yousaf. It, it was out of nowhere. She was magnificent. I've got to say, she's gone up very much in my estimation. Uh, he went all defensive. I uh, didn't know what had hit him. Uh, Ash Regan, of course, comes across as a bimbling airhead, but no, no, no surprise there. Um, he then sort of launched back at her, and um, but it was a very weak. It was like a, a, a sort of a parting shot. Uh, there was no, um, there's no menace in it. Uh, but what she said to him, um, I mean, she got him nailed. She nailed him right on. She described his failure perfectly. Uh, but the irony, of course, is she was only highlighting the failure of the SNPs over the last. Oh God, it seems like a hundred years that they've been in control and destroying Scotland. Nobody was there to stop them. And we just, oh, it was popcorn TV. It was absolutely wonderful to watch. I'm going to show you the video now. Then we're going to cut to the newspaper report going alongside it. Uh, and then I've got a, a, a small snippet at the end, which is well worth watching because uh, it goes to show how out of touch and how full of nonsensical thought must occupy the airhead that is Ash Regan. She comes up with a statement that's clearly nonsense, uh, but it's just funny. I mean, it would be farcical. Anyway, uh, we'll get in, we'll put this video on straight away, and it is great. So uh, enjoy this. Well, Hamza, you've had a number of jobs in government. When you were Transport Minister, the trains were never on time. When you were Justice Minister, the police were strained to breaking point. And now, as Health Minister, we've got record high waiting times. What makes you think you can do a better job as First Minister? You see wow. Wow. She has like, filleted him like a fish. He didn't know what hit him. Um, and that was the line. But what she's done there is the line, like I say, she is showing and highlighting the failures, not of Hamza Yousaf. We all know he's a failure. But of the SNP and how they keep pushing failures to the top. We don't want failures being leaders. But then he responds. We'll have a look at this. Minister. You say you're the only candidate that can persuade people who voted no. In the first week of your campaign, you had people who voted leave, uh, voted yes, leave your campaign. MSP after MSP. You've had many people, particularly from our LGBTQ community, say they won't vote for independence if you're the leader. Forget persuading no voters. You can't even keep yes voters and on site. To be fair, he did raise a valid point. She opened her beak and went on about being anti-gay marriage, anti-children out of wedlock. And that alienated voters uh, and it alienated people in her own party. And so some MSPs did jump ship, although notably they went from her to Hamza Yousaf. They didn't go to Ash Regan. Uh, and Ash Regan comes across as, as I say, a bit empty, a bit of an empty vessel. I thought she'd have resigned by now. She hadn't, I think, on watching back uh, performance, which you'll see in a moment. Um, I think she she really should consider pulling out of the race. But uh, yeah, so that's that clip. We'll, we'll move on to the next final clip here. You would reject the Greens, who are, of course, the second largest pro-independence majority party. How on earth can you call yourself a unifier? Well, I am a unifier because I have already united the wider movement behind me. I think we need to heal the rifts of our own party. Um, if you look at what's been happening with the... Uh, um, the arrangement with the Greens, we've actually got ourselves into um, some slightly um, murky territory at times. What's your well, how many ums and ers and ers? And yeah, I am because I've done that. I've, I've united people in the great. Yeah, I've done that. She sounds like a teenager. She sounds like a teenager who's been caught doing something and is trying to justify it. That's not a leader. Uh, and I think that that performance um, has just put the seal on the uh, on the on the rejection by the people i'm pretty sure that even even the snp rank and file members will look at that and think that ash regan is in no way leadership material so that's that one but we'll have a look at the paper now we'll go down uh, and do the normal uh, looking at the article uh, and then we'll have a look honestly the the, the things that when, that when that when ash regan opens her mouth and you can just hear the stupid come out anyway so here we are, the SNP's damning verdict on the SNP. Leadership candidates roast each other uh, over trains not running, health service meltdown and police failures in Scotland during extraordinary circular firing squad TV debate. Now, I've got to say, like I say, the trains not running, the health service meltdown 
uh, and the police failures, all Hamza Yousaf. Uh, but they really have um, opened up a can of worms. They're now free, uh, free with each other. They're criticising each other. They're criticising the, their own party's record. It is destructive in the extreme for the SNP. It's great, isn't it? So anyway, the three SNP leadership candidates clash in contest's first live televised debate. Hamza Yousaf, Kate Falls and Ash Regan trade a series of blows in an STV event. Um, STV obviously stands for Stop Tories Voting. And you'll see why I'm saying that at the end of this video. Uh, when we get to that little last snippet uh, about Ash Regan, but bear that in mind. Anyway, the SNP leadership contest has been compared to a circular firing squad after the three candidates tore lumps out of each other in the debate last night. Hamza Yousaf, widely viewed as the frontrunner in the race to succeed Nicola Sturgeon, saw his ministerial record panned by rival Kate Forbes. Not just her, everybody knows he's an absolute failure. Uh, she accused her fellow cabinet uh, minister of overseeing failures across the country's transport, justice and health systems during his time as a key member of the Scottish government. Uh, but actually, I will say it wasn't in that video, but if you did watch it last night, you'll know this. He responded, um, apart from what you saw in the video there, he also responded by saying, yes, but at least I've made it into those kind of levels. You've never held any position like that. So he was, you know, he was um, shitting on her, really, to some extent. Um, he hit back. Uh, by suggesting Miss Forbes' election as party leader would see the SNP lurching to the right. Um, there's nothing wrong with being right, let me tell you. Uh, following criticism of her socially conservative views, Ash Regan, seen as the outsider in the contest to become Socialist Nick's first minister, took a swipe at Miss Sturgeon's record by claiming the SNP had lost its way. I don't think the SNP ever had a way. It is a one policy party. It's never done anything other than go independent, 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 that's it. It's failed at every other thing it's done because it is solely concentrating on one issue. Uh, she claimed no progress had been made on Scottish independence in recent years. Actually, it has. There has been massive progress in making sure that independence never happens. The vote, the, the people supporting independence have consistently fallen. It's great to see. Viewers expressed astonishment at the bitter exchanges between the three SNP candidates as they appeared to deliver a damning verdict on their own party's 15 years. And is that all? It seems much, much longer. Years of power at Holyrood. Uh, and here's a picture of them all. And, you know, it's it's just three. It, honestly, it, it's which of those polished turds do you want to win? It's awful, but uh, no, I think, uh, actually, like I say, I think Kate Forbes came across um, as the strongest of the three. I, I've got to say, very much against what I expected, she performed very well last night. I think she, if you've got to pick one, if you've got to pick one, I think she would be the one I would pick. I mean, I don't get to say I'm not an SNP member uh, and never will be, but... I think of all three, I think she came across as the best candidate. Still god-awful, still destructive for Scotland. But if you're going to pick one, that would be the one I'd pick. Anyway, Eddie Barnes, campaign director of Our Scottish Future, described the hour-long debate as a circular firing squad. Douglas Ross, the leader of the Scottish Tories, quipped the SNP leadership hopefuls had fought like gnats in a sack. Very good. Uh, and Scottish Labour figures boasted debate had represented a party election broadcast on their behalf. Boom, boom. Well done, Scottish Labour. You've just earned yourself a load of votes last night and it didn't cost you a penny. Uh, last night's Head to Head was the first live televised debate in the SNP leadership contest and was hosted by STV at the broadcaster's headquarters in Glasgow. STV, of course, is the communications wing of the SNP. The most brutal exchanges came between Mr Yousaf, Scotland's Health Secretary, and Ms Forbes, Scotland's Finance Secretary, who are considered to be the most likely replacements for Ms Sturgeon as the SNP leader. Yeah, you've got the feisty little dwarf from Sky, uh, or you've got the uh, the glove puppet, um, you know, Sturgeon's glove puppet. So it isn't really uh, much of a contest, uh, because whoever, whoever wins, Scotland loses. I keep saying that, but it's true. Uh, Miss Forbes attacked Mr Yousaf over his ministerial record, telling him you were a transport minister and the trains were never on time. While you were Justice Secretary, the police were stretched to breaking point and as now as Health Secretary, we've got record high waiting times. What makes you think you can do a better job at First Minister? And when asked later whether she would keep Mr Yousaf 
in the Scottish Cabinet. If she became First Minister, Miss Forbes also sniped, maybe not in health. She does not like him. Um, and she came across, I got to say, I, I was, I'm so surprised at how good she was. I wasn't surprised at how awful she is. Now you can tell, look at that expression. That's someone who's been asked a really difficult question and is trying, rumming, rummaging around in that brain, trying to come up with an answer that doesn't make her sound like a complete idiot and failing. Uh, anyway, Mr. Yousaf is a close ally of Miss Sturgeon, his glove puppet, and Miss Forbes took a dig at the pair when she insisted that more of the same in the SNP is an acceptance of mediocrity. Isn't this just... It, it, if you haven't watched this debate, go back and look at STV. If you can get FTP, uh, STV, go and watch that debate. It was brilliant. It says, it's time for a change. Continuity won't cut it. Tonight, I offer a new start for Scotland, she said, as she promised to lead a new generation. Uh, Miss Forbes branded Mr Yousaf the continuity candidate and the no change candidate. Mr Yousaf hit back at Miss Forbes, a member of the Evangelical Free Church of Scotland, by highlighting criticism of her personal views and suggesting her election as leader would see the SNP lurching to the right, which I say would be no bad thing. Uh, he claimed her opposition to Scotland's gender identity reform, pushed through the Scottish Parliament by Miss Sturgeon last year, was clouding her judgment in her decision not to challenge Westminster's block on the legislation. Now, on this point, we have to remember that Yousaf did not take part in that vote. He excused himself, he made sure he wasn't around so that he couldn't be seen to be voting for it by his religion or against it by his party. So he took the very, very brave decision and ran away and hid. Do you want him as leader? A man who cannot answer a difficult question? Anyway, uh, he also noted how many people, particularly from the LGBTQ community, say they wouldn't vote for independence if Miss Forbes was leader after she last month set out her personal stance on issues such as same-sex marriage. Um, Mr Yousaf pledged to grow support for Scottish independence to new heights. Well, since he's been uh, in the party, it's fallen to new depths. So I don't know how he's going to do that as the continuity minister. Uh, he also boasted he was the only candidate ready to challenge Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's use of a Section 35 order to stop the Gender Recognition Reform Scotland Bill from becoming law. Not that he particularly wants this law, you understand, but he needs to be seen to be doing something. Um, and then, don't forget, this is the law, as I say, that he didn't vote for. Um, Miss Forbes suggested Mr Yousaf was spoiling for a fight regardless of the legal advice on the constitutional wrangle between Edinburgh and London over the Holyrood legislation. Ms Regan, the only leadership candidate not currently serving in the Scottish Cabinet, claimed the SNP had lost its way. Well, it certainly would with you in charge, love. You couldn't read a map, could you? Uh, and admitted there had been no progress on independence in recent years. It had fallen, you know. Uh, she insisted that an SNP majority at each election held in future would represent a democratic mandate for Scottish independence. In a swipe at Miss Sturgeon's record as First Minister, she said there's been no progress on independence in the last few years, despite the worst UK government of all time. Oh, that's harsh. It's not the worst UK government of all time. It's just the worst for a long time. Uh, but there, there have been worse. Uh, Labour, 1974. God help us. Labour, 1976. Crisis? What crisis? No, 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 no. You know, you, you, you're not far off the mark, but you know, I've got to take issue with that one. Anyway, when all three uh, candidates were asked if they would keep the monarchy in an independent Scotland, Miss Regan said in the new circumstances after the Queen's death, it might be time for the SNP to debate if retaining the monarchy was still the right policy. Miss Forbes said there were bigger issues facing Scotland, while Mr Yousaf said he would keep the monarchy for a period of time, he, but added, I would hope an independent Scotland would be a republic in the future. Last month, all three of Miss Forbes, Miss Regan and Miss Yousaf, Mr Yousaf were confirmed to have met the threshold to formally enter the leadership race. About 100,000 SNP members will be able to begin voting on their preferred candidate on March the 13th. Um, March the 27th was when they're, they're going to announce which of the three glittery turds has made it all the way to Holyrood House. Um, and let's hope that the whoever wins it is not um, Yousaf. I don't care about either of the two ladies in this race. Um, they're both, you know, both awful people. Uh, but he has, a, he has a record of failure. But we need to look, and I, I'll keep teasing this, we're going to have a look at something Ash Regan said um, very quickly. So I'll, I'll go straight into it, uh, which is this article here. Boom. 
So SNP leadership candidate Ash Regan claims voters in the Scottish border regions back the Tories because they watch English ITV instead of STV as hopefuls vying to replace Nicola Sturgeon Brace for the first televised clash tonight. Have I ever heard any more arrant nonsense? Um, this, she suggested that the TV channel might have an impact on voting in the area. Does she not understand that the people in the north of England are virtually all Labour supporters? Does she not understand that? Does she not understand that they're not Tory voters? Number one. Number two, watching television is not an indication of which way you vote. Um, just because you watch ITV, English ITV in the Borders region, isn't an indictment of your voting practice. It's an indictment of STV's output. People prefer to watch English ITV if they can get it because STV is crap and biased. Very, very pro SNP bias. Um, and it is that's not that's no uh, that's no big uh, secret. Everybody kind of knows this. No, it's it's STV output. I mean, STV are required by law, for example, to produce so many hours of television in Scots Gaelic, um, and, the, and the number of people who watch Scots who can speak Scots Gaelic, uh, you know, it's a tiny, tiny proportion of the Scottish population. Um, and so, if they can get ITV, they'll watch ITV. You don't want to watch some soap opera in Gaelic if you can't speak it. That doesn't make you a Tory voter. Why would she say this? It, is she one of these as well, like Sturgeon? Absolutely, rabidly anti-English and anti-everything about England. I mean, it's a very weird thing if that's the case. Um, but it just goes to show that the, the, the nonsense that goes through these people's minds. Anyway, I shall stop there and uh, I will come up and we'll round off the video because it's gone on quite long enough, I think. The people who are members of the SNP have a very difficult job over the next couple of weeks. They've got to look at these three candidates and pick one. It's not an easy task. You have on one hand an airhead who is quite out of her depth, or you have a moron who fails at everything he's ever tried to do, or you have another very intense short woman, uh, but this time one who comes from a kind of very bigoted background where she doesn't like gay people and she doesn't like unwed mothers. How can you pick from these three wonderful, wonderful human beings, which of them will do the least harm? It's hard to say, uh, but my, you know, I've made no bones about it. And I've been quite clear. I was impressed most of all by Kate Forbes. I think she came across as certainly intelligent uh, and certainly someone who recognises all the failures of her own party. And I think if the SNP needs to change, she is the one to bring about that change. You don't want continuity Hamza, because he, as I say, will be the glove pu puppet of Nicola uh, Sturgeon for the next few years. So you vote Hamza, you get Sturgeon. Um, and you can't have Ash Regan because she hasn't got a clue what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, I've got to say it, I would, I would rather have any other party in charge. But if it's going to be those three, I think Kate Forbes is the only choice that they've got, really. Um, because God help Scotland if he gets control. God help you all. God help everyone. God help the world if he gets control. Um, it would be... You'll never see a country break down and destroy itself so quickly if that man has his hands on the levers of power. But anyway, I shall leave that with you. Thank you very much for listening. A bit of a long video, this one, but thank you very much if you've got to the end with me. Uh, and if you haven't uh, yet subscribed and you've watched the end of this video, oh, for heaven's sake, just subscribe. Uh, and don't miss them, ring that bell as well. Uh, and for regular viewers who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Uh, anyway, other than that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, prepare for the worst and goodbye.